Hi, this is Mike Power, President and CEO of Silver Range Resources, and this is a quick look at our loaner property. As always, first a quick word from our lawyers. Loaner is located 35 kilometers south of Winnemucca. It's east of the Grass Valley Road and readily accessible on a four-wheel drive road along a pipeline. Currently, the property consists of 16 federal load claims centered on Washoki Canyon. It's on BLM land and there's no surface impairments. MBMG files indicate that the first discoveries of gold in the area were made about 1906. There was a small stamp mill operated there in 1915 and some high grading during the 1930s. There's been up to 90 feet of shafting and 1,000 feet of underground workings recorded in the mining district. In more recent years, there's been staking in the area by Newmont, Santa Fe and St. Joe, but very limited drilling. We found one drill collar on the property. Surface workings on the property consists of a series of shafts and adits and open cuts. Most of the work is concentrated here where there was some small high grading operations. Here's a quick look at the workings. We're in the area of the main workings where the high grading was done in the 30s. You can see here there's a series of open cuts and glory holes. And about 600 meters to the west, there's some more workings, largely centered on this shaft you see here. Loner's located near the North Nevada Rift, a geologic feature which has localized a lot of high-grade, low-sulfidation epithermal deposits in northern Nevada. Zooming in a bit, Loner's located on the west flank of the Sonoma Range, about 20 kilometers east of the North Nevada Rift. The property is underlain by Permian Havila Quartzite, and early tertiary, 57, 58 million year old, granodiorite and granite. Both these rock units are cut by much younger fault shears and veins that host the gold mineralization. Let's have a look at that gold mineralization. This is a plot of bedrock gold results from a number of grab and chip samples that we've taken from workings and veins in the area. Best results to date are 16 grams from a grab sample and 25 grams over 1.8 meters from workings in this area here. The mineralization is found in veins and shears that are exposed largely in old workings. There's not a single vein system in here. Instead, there's a series of on echelon veins exposed. There's not much bedrock exposure, but there's not a lot of overburden covering it. What you're seeing here is just basically the old workings. Nonetheless, they cover an area of about 600 meters by 200 meters. And it's clear that this is a network of veins and not a single vein system. There's a lot of arsenic associated with the gold in the bedrock samples. Peak value of 4200 ppm, and virtually every sample that kicks gold will kick some arsenic. Here's what the mineralization looks like. The gold mineralization is located in veins and shears. They're dominantly filled with gouge, but there are also a series of quartz veinlets within them. In addition to quartz, there's agillaria. Some of the quartz contains fairly heavy sulfides, dominantly pyrite. We put an 1100 by 400 meter soil grid over the showings to try and characterize the bedrock response and thought we had the area covered. As it turns out, we didn't. The bedrock response in gold is very gratifying with values up to 204 ppb gold. For Nevada, these are pretty high grade samples. You can see here the gold results in relation to the veins shown in purple. And there's a good correlation between high gold and soils and where the veins are found. Here are the results in arsenic. Once again, you can see that close association between arsenic and the gold mineralization found in the veins. We ran principal component analysis on the log normalized soil geochemical data set. It's not a large data set, but nonetheless, the results we found are quite interesting. If you're not familiar with principal component analysis, consider this map to be an indication of soil ge geochemical response associated with gold in bedrock mineralization with the higher numbers and the warmer colors, the reds and the oranges, indicating areas where the soil response suggests there's bedrock gold located below. The veins are shown in purple for reference. Our analysis indicated that the gold response is dominantly associated with PCA factor one. And in addition to having a strong correlation with gold, PCA factor one has strong loadings in arsenic, antimony and mercury. These are key pathfinder elements in low sulfidation gold deposits. There are two trends in the data. The northern trend is not associated with any known bedrock gold occurrence and remains to be tested by trenching. The southern trend here is associated with the bedrock gold responses in the old workings. The interesting feature about this lower trend is its width. It's two to 300 meters wide. 
and suggests that there might be a larger target present here than just a series of small quartz veins. We ran a horizontal loop electromagnetics field survey over the soil grid to try and see if we could find any bedrock structure. You're seeing here the 3520 hertz data, in phase is solid, quadrature dashed. Here's the 7 kilohertz overlaying, 14 and 28 kilohertz. You can see a clear pattern in the HLEM data, and from this we can quickly delineate a series of bedrock conductors. These are moderate to steeply deepening features which appear to be associated with discrete faults or other fractures in the bedrock. Here are those same bedrock conductors shown in the orange dash lines, overlain with the veins shown in sort of white pink, and overlain finally on top of the apparent half space resistivity. You can see here in this plot that the conductors and the veins tend to follow the boundaries between low and high resistivity domains. Total magnetic field data was also collected. Once again, the conductor shown as the dashed orange lines, the veins in white, and underneath the shaded total magnetic field response. The conductors and the veins appear to follow mag lows throughout the project area. So what have we learned? We're dealing with a low sulfidation epithermal system. There's high grade gold present. Our sample profiles are excellent with most samples coming in over five grams per ton from the historic workings. The veins that host the mineralization are on echelon. They're part of a wider system and not a single continuous vein. This suggests there might be a larger target in the area than we see just from the distribution of sparse workings. There's a strong soil response in gold and other key low sulfidation epithermal pathfinder elements. There's an associated EM response, which indicates some bedrock architecture underneath this system. What we're defining is a large and expanding target area. We've got targets that are extending beyond 1100 meters on strike, and we appear to have a series of parallel systems, some extending off the grid. In terms of a target model, loners located above the arsenic line here, and also in the zone where Agilaria is found. That places it in about this location here in a classic Buchanan low sulfidation epithermal model, well above the boiling zone, leaving lots of room to develop resources. We think Loner might be part of a larger low sulfidation epithermal system. About 12 miles south of Loner is Kinross's Gold Banks deposit, currently at about 550,000 ounces gold. Both Loner and Gold Banks are in the same basement host rocks. They share the same structural setting and the same style of mineralization. It's conceivable there could be also a large epithermal system at Loner. We need to have a look and find out. At Loner, the more we look, the more we find. We started with a few small showings and they kicked back high grade. We found more showings. They too kicked back high grade. We've run soil geochem and geophysics surveys over the grid and our anomalies are strong, associated with the bedrock mineralization and extend off our grid. The more we look, the more we find and the better and bigger the target seems to be. Next year, we're looking forward to doing some trenching and expanding our soil and geochemical survey grid to see just how big this system might be. So stay tuned.